Okay, we are back with another episode of A Certain Age Podcast. I am your host, Stevie Rodriguez, alongside co-host Cody Maurice Doggett. How are you? I'm doing good. Hey, boo. So good to hear your voice. I am loving this show so much. It's such a stark shift from our other show tags podcast which we love but yeah. it's refreshing and i'm hoping people are receiving it me too it's so good to be able to really take topics that are related to our health and growing older and really break them down with professionals because that is something that you know we need we need that outside sometimes we need an outside voice to really tell us what's going on inside and what better way to grow older than gracefully right absolutely i think what's really nice about this show is you'll get some of the tools. We are certainly getting some tools that we are putting in our arsenal for aging, uh, aging gracefully, like you just said, but hopefully they're enlightening as well and things to consider. And because we're just kind of, we're all aging, but we want to do it in the best way we can. And hopefully some of these shows are offering some insight into that. And with that, on this episode, we are going to be welcoming Susan Bratton to the show. And she's an intimacy expert, but she's also going to give us some tools, some really great supplements to consider that are going to make aging and that process so much easier. And it got me thinking a lot too. In the last couple of years, I have been taking my vitamin C and I know she's Mm -hmm. going to be talking about so many other supplements, but I've been taking my vitamin D. You know, we live in a place where we don't always get sun 365 days a year. And so you want to take supplements, I believe, because you can't always get it in diet and you want to feel good every day. Do you take any supplements yourself? I do. To battle my eczema, I oh. take aloe and I also take chlorella to kind of clear out any toxins because, you know, we live in a very in a city that ha- there's so much floating in the air. So I take both of those regularly. What's that last one for toxins? Because I want to add that to my arsenal. Chlorella. Corona. Yeah, I'll I'll send it. I'll send you some. I'll get you some. I meant to get some yesterday, but I I, I forgot. <laughs> but I'll get you some when I grab some. Nice. Well, we had so much to talk to Susan that we kept her on a really long time, but all pertinent information from the supplements to how to live a really long, healthy life because you don't want to just be living to a certain age. You want to be living and feeling healthy and good. And she's talking all about that. Plus sexual intimacy as well. And so let's just get into it because it was such a good conversation. And let's welcome Susan Bratton. Okay, well, we could not be more excited to welcome our very special guest, She's been on Tag's podcast before, and we're happy to have her on Of a Certain Age. So much to get into with Susan Bratton, intimacy expert to millions, intimacy expert, CEO, and co-founder, Personal Life Media. Susan Bratton is a champion and advocate for all who desire passionate relationships with over 34 books and programs offering practical actionable pleasure techniques, and bedroom communication skills. She's a true advocate and teacher of refusing to age, and that's why we really wanted her on this show. Welcome to the show, Susan. Hi, Steve. Hi, Cody. It's so great to be here. Hi, Susan. Hi, Cody. I'm super (laughs) psyched to talk about longevity, and especially because lately I came up with this super cool thing, and I'm so proud of it. So you know how everybody's always talking about extending your health span so that, you know, we want to live longer, but longevity is no good if you don't feel good. So it's Mm -hmm. the notion is longevity is great, but let's extend our health span. So we're healthy till the day we die. And then Mm. I was like, let's extend our sex span. So we're healthy and we have great sex till the day we die too. 
Love so I'm, I'm all proud of myself for the whole sex sex span concept. I love it. <laughs> well, like we, as the show suggests, we are, we are all aging. You can't help it. Um, what have you discovered, though, about science, supplementation that can really just keep us feeling good, keeping us healthy, like you just said, looking good, since many of us are now living longer lives, um, which is a blessing. It is a blessing as long as they're healthy, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, I know. And, you know, my mom and my stepdad, they're 85 and 90, and he's the brawn and she's the brains. And between the two of them, they they're in their home. They're doing great. You know, they, they're they making it happen. And um, he still gives her back rubs every night. And, Aww. you know, they're very, very close. And I just, um, I just think that's, and my mom is still beautiful, which I love as well. So I'm really, really happy to be very focused on my longevity. And I don't know, Steve, I think you do know this about me. I run two companies. I've got Personal Life Media, which is kind of the nickname is Better Lover, betterlover.com. But I also have that supplement company. I think I sent you my libido vitamins and my nitric oxide supplement, didn't I? Ooh. You did. And I was going to talk a little bit later about some of the supplements. Nitric oxide has been the deal for me I that I keep. I love it so much for blood flow. Yeah. You have to really have good. It. Yeah. So when I started the 20, it's called the 20 because it's based on the 80-20 rule. You know, like 20%, if you look at your results, the results you're getting, 20% of what you're doing is actually getting the results and 80% of it is kind of wasted effort. If you just mm -hmm. knew what the 20% was, you could focus on it. And so I thought, oh, that's it. It's called the Pareto Principle, actually. And um, I thought, oh, that's a great name for a company because I want to do the things that are the 20%. And I want to use the ingredients that are the 20%. And my number one top selling product is Flow, the nitric oxide booster. Because oh, okay. one of the things that I learned really early on is that our genital structures both the vulva owners and the penis owners of us are really our sensuality and our pleasure actually run on nitric oxide, which is a gaseous signaling molecule that's that squeezes the blood to our brain when we're thinking, to our mm -hmm. heart and our glutes when we're exercising or whatever we're exercising, and to our genitals when right. we're in arousal. And the problem is that by the time we're 50, we have half the nitric oxide we did when we were 20. And that's oh, wow. if we're still eating our good vegetables. Most people don't eat enough <laughs> vegetables. Correct. And so it's actually the green, leafy greens and the beetroot. And believe it or not, watermelon, citrulline comes from watermelon. Oh. And those are the things that generate the nitrates that our tongue turns into nitrites. There's bacteria in our tongue that turn it into nitrites. It goes into our gastric system in our stomach and our stomach acid turns it into nitric oxide and our body stores it for release when we need it. But people who use antibacterial mouthwash they ruin the the bacteria that do that, Ooh. so they're not making as as much nitric oxide. Is the that bad? That use, yeah, bad. Super oh, no. bad. You're yeah, stripping would, away essentially, right? You're Good you're killing, bacteria. It's a it's bacteria side. But it's oh, killing wow. bad, but it's also killing the good. So there are mouthwashes that aren't antibacterial that you can use. And oil pulling is very good, too. If you Ooh. really want to take care of your health, oh. oil pulling is very good for your for your um, oral microbiome. Okay. And then the acid blockers that people are taking, the proton pump inhibitors, that you know everything from the Tums to the Zantax and things like that, they're lowering our stomach acid. The real problem when people have acid reflux is actually that their acid is too low and the sphincter that keeps the stuff in your stomach from coming up into your esophagus, it actually operates on acid. It's an acid um, sphincter. And so it needs high acid in your stomach to keep it closed. And so 
a lot of times people have like H. pylori overgrowths and things like that that keep them from producing enough acid. Plus our acid diminishes as we age too. So we're not getting enough nitric oxide, which means the blood can't run down into the penile chambers and it can't run down into the three chambers of the vulva either. And visualize this, you guys. You, you two don't have a lot of experience with the vulva, but what I can tell you is... <laughs> Our listeners that, do, that. <laughs> <laughs> Your listeners do, exactly. But you, if I took your penis and I held it up, it would look like a banana. 50% of your penis, maybe 60% sticks out, but you've got even more in and down towards your testicles. Oh. So your penis is bigger than you think. And the right. entire- I, I mean, that, tell people I, that all see, the time. <laughs> <you invited me>. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and, and the thing is that if I took the skin off of the banana and was left with the fruit, that is how much erectile tissue is in your penis. All of your penis is basically the fruit inside is erectile tissue. I take that same amount of fruit and I turn it into a circle with a point on the top. That's what's in the vulva in our female genitals. We have as much erectile tissue as our male body partners do. So interesting. And we can't get the blood into our genitals to get our lady boners, just like men can't get yeah. the, you know, penis owners can't get the erection uh, in their penis if they don't have good nitric oxide, good blood flow. So yes, and also it makes your skin nice. It gives you better cognitive function. It actually helps produce your hormones. Nitric oxide is like a major deal for anti-aging and longevity. It's, it's like one of the basic supplements along with things like the omega fatty acids and your full multivitamin, multimineral, complex. Then you add from there. Those are like the three cornerstones of longevity supplementation that you really shouldn't be skipping over in your haste to do your NAD vitamins and, you know, all these different <laughs> things that the spermidine and right. the, you know all the longevity stuff that is coming out now, which I, the senolytics, you know, all of these kinds of things. So that's really the, the core of supplementation for longevity is making sure you have enough of the basics. A lot of this, what you're talking about is biohacking, correct? Yeah. Or sexual yeah. biohacking. For people that are confused on what that really means, can mm -hmm. you just break that down quickly? Yeah, I'd be delighted to. Actually, I just got back from Orlando. I was a keynote at Dave Asprey's biohacking conference. Oh, wow. And wow. we did a really nice 45-minute segment where I talked about what is biohacking. They know what biohacking is. What is sexual biohacking? So I'll explain biohacking and sexual biohacking. And then I okay. talked about the 20 kinds of orgasms our human body can have oh, and how wow. to do what I call orgasmic cross-training because <sighs> there is so much more pleasure we can be having with our bodies than we are really aware of. So I talked a lot about that. And then I talked about male enhancement and female enhancement and regenerative therapy. So I know you'll want to touch on those later, but what biohacking basically is, it came out of the longevity uh, world. And it was early people who wanted to use technology, the quantification of our health to live longer. Dave Asprey is really the father of biohacking. There are other, many other biohackers like Ben Greenfield, for example, um, myself in the sexual biohacking sphere. And what we want is the data so we can make the decisions that help us live longer. Those can be anything from the blood tests that we get, you know, what should you be tracking? What metrics should you be tracking? It's funny. I was just approving an email that goes mm -hmm. out to my newsletter, which you can get at betterlover.com. I'll just drop that now so you don't have to think yep. about it. Um, <laughs> and it's the six tests you should get and the numbers you should track for optimal health and performance as you age. Ooh, so okay. I really like to put these we things out there. We can stop the show there, there almost. <laughs> I know. I just want to make it easy, right? Done and done. But yeah, I'm, well, get, I'm getting that. Anymore. 
But um, biohacking started out with that. And now there's things like the aura ring. Do you know the the ring that tracks your sleep? Yes. I have of a friend that uses that. Yeah. Apple Watch, of course, is fantastic. Fit yes. bits are great. And then we have a lot of other data we can do. Like, for example, one of the one of the this is another thing I was just um uh, promoting to my newsletter readers was to get your true age number. So True Age Diagnostics is a, and I can get you a link for this if you need it, but True Age Diagnostics is essentially a test, a blood test, where they test your methylation. And what's okay. interesting about your methylation is that if you think about methylation in like super dumb, simple terms, it's basically just you have these biochemical reactions and they need to work all the way through their cycle to be most effective. And sometimes we're missing either genetic SNPs or, or we're missing certain, you know, like fundamental nutrients that don't allow us to complete our methylation path. A perfect example of that is that there are many people who have a genetic anomaly called MTHFR. They okay. call it the mother, fur, fur, you know, the mother fur, yeah. fur <laughs> gene because it makes you a poor methylator and that keeps you from processing a lot of your amino acids and other things really well. And so you're not making as many neurotransmitters or hormones. You're not getting the amino acids to build your proteins. And so it's good to know you have this because, for example, if you're an MTHFR person, you need what are called methylated B vitamins. If you're always tired and you're always just kind of draggy and you take B vitamins and they don't give you a lift, you go have a B12 IV bag or something and you don't really feel better. It's literally because you need methylated vitamins. You need them to have the, the chain the way that your body can use it. It's like my vitamins are methylated Bs. And so- okay. True age is a very in because everybody can use methylated bees, but only p only people without the MTHR can use non methylated bees. So methylated bees are a higher quality B vitamin. So okay. True Diagnostics does this blood test, and they tell you what your biological age is instead of just your chronological age. So I'm 61, about to be 62, and I'm having the best sex of my life, and I'm totally kicking butt in the universe, so ain't Fabulous. no stopping me now. Hey, hey. And I'm going to keep this going. I'm on a winning streak. Um, but my, my biological age, according to this test, how well and efficiently my body is operating is 43. And hey. I'd like to get that down to 40. I'm working on making that number go down. So, for example, one of the things I'm doing in August is I'm going to a doctor who's going to do liposuction of about a stick of butter of my fat. And he's going to pull the stem cells out of it. And I'm going to bank my stem cells so that I can use them to repair my body as I age. They can now wow. put them in cryo and pull them out and replicate them and cultivate them and ship them to a doctor who can inject them into your knees or your shoulders or your hip or whatever, or if you get a, a brain injury, or you just want to do systemic IVs to, you know, counter the inflammation of aging. Right. And so what I want to do is stem cell therapy of my own stem cells. And I feel good about it because I have this body of a 43 year old, even though I've been on the earth almost 62 years. So that that's beautiful. a nice thing that you can track as a biohacker. It's just another example of a data point we have available today. So biohacking is the combination of quantifying your health in many ways and doing things that lower your biological age. And that's everything from red light therapy to cryo and cold plunging to supplementation to high intensity interval training, exercise to whatever. There's a million things you can be doing, but those are some of the big hot ones that people are doing. Intermittent right fasting, I, I would imagine would be another. Intermittent fasting is very, very good. Senolytics, taking senolytics, which are the supplements that you take that kind of mimic intermittent fasting. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm well, you've answered so many questions al already, <laughs> but Cody, I know you want to jump in there. Go, go yeah, oh, ahead. yes. We might have to jump around because you've answered some, given us even more. I love it. It's I knew you were amazing. Would, You're a wealth yeah. of information, and I'm I'm sucking it all up. Thank you so Me much. Too. Uh, so I told we you, Cody. Been, <laughs> I, I'm living. I 
we we you mentioned earlier about how it is easy to compare yourself to who we were when we were younger. How do you look at like how you look and you felt when you were younger? How do you think why do you think people want to relive their glory days basically? And how has your products and philosophy combated that feeling, do you think? Oh yeah. Right. Um I'm trying to remember the woman who wrote that book about ageism. She called it This Chair Rocks. And I always thought that was so clever. I forget her name. I I met her at the TED conference one time. Um, What I think I am trying to do is I'm trying to serve as an example of how incredibly pleasurable middle and I mean, like, I think I'm going to live to 100. That's my goal. And and I think I have a shot at it. My grandparents lived until their mid 90s. So it's not really much of a stretch in today's world, though we do have to do a lot more detoxification because of our air, water, food, our Mm -hmm. beauty products, etc. We have a much higher toxic load than our ancestors and even our grandparents did. But One of the things that I like to do is I like to stand as an example of what is possible. I mean, I literally, the reason that I was a little bit late for this is that I was just posting the most gorgeous photo shoot I've ever done in my life to my OnlyFans VIP members. Hey. I went to LA and I did literally this. I'll send it to you guys if you want to see it. It's just drop dead gorgeous photos. My boobs are showing. My I show my yoni. I mean, I'm I'm an almost 62-year-old woman, and I feel sexy and beautiful. I look gorgeous in those photos. I work out every day. I take care of my mind, body, and spirit. And lots of us are out there doing that. It's possible, and there is... I am as beautiful as a 20, 30, 40, 50-year-old woman, and I will be just as beautiful in my 70s, 80s, and 90s. Come because through. I love it's it. about who you are for your age and how you hold yourself as a specimen and believe in yourself and your value. And we don't have to, I don't have to look like a 30 year old. Yes. I'm a gorgeous 60 year old. Yes. I don't want to look like a 30 year old. That would look fake and weird. I don't right. want to be surgerized. My boobs sag, but they sag in a beautiful, pendulous way that nobody's gone, your boobs look ugly. They're all going, thank you for letting me see your boobs. Yes. They're amazing. I mean, that's what we need more of. And we are getting yeah. more of that. It's coming. There, the ageism thing is diminishing. Mm-hmm. And people are realizing that you don't know much in your 20s. And in your 30s, you've got a lot of energy and a little experience. In your 40s, <laughs> you've, got, you know, you've got even more experience and more strategic mind. My God, by the time you get in your 60s, you are, you've got wisdom, experience, analytical skills, an idea of history of the future you are there to support others coming up below you i mean that's one of the most beautiful things about being in your 60s is you finally if you've worked your whole life and you have some resources you're actually available to help others get ahead which is one of the most wonderful things about being in my 60s is supporting others coming up below me wow. behind me and showing them what's possible and making opp- creating opportunities for them that's satisfying I, I love, love it. that and all of that that you just said it radiates off of you the beauty oh, the giving so I really appreciate you spending this time with us as far as your you said that you want to support people and th- on your website, you say you have a mission of inclusivity and including the LGBTQ plus community. Can you tell me why that's so, why that's so important to you and how you continue to commit to that as a company? Yeah, for sure. Um, The first thing is that, you know, my father was a gay man. So I probably was 10 or 12 when I learned that he was gay. And, and he was a closeted gay man. He was married. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had three mm-hmm. wives through his life. He liked and preferred to be closeted. But ain't no hiding how gay my dad was. My dad was <laughs> as gay as they come. <laughs> 
I, I mean, think Stephen and I can relate. Well <laughs> yeah. dressed. He was like the you know the the quintessential femme man, and um, I remember the day I was born. He told me when I was young. He said, "The day you were born, and I found out you were a girl." I was so happy. Yeah. I didn't know what I was going to do with a little boy. I wanted a daughter so much. I feel that. <laughs> oh, and I mean, I always felt wanted by my father. And he he taught me every show tune in the book. Wow. <laughs> we would sing show tunes, you know, and oh my God, I just love that man so much. So I come from a family of crazy, liberal, progressive, democratic, everyone is equal. My parents in the 60s had parties where there were mixed race couples and gay and queer and lesbians and everything. I grew up with it. Mm -hmm. So it is just, it is for me the norm. And I look at anyone who doesn't think that's the norm as like behind the times. Yeah. Um, you know, they, 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 they haven't had their consciousness raised, unfortunately, yet. Mm -hmm. um, they don't understand that we are all connected. Um, you know, that I think is the most, most important thing. And so I really try to do a number of things. The first thing that I try to do is I try to use language that is inclusive in what I do. Mm -hmm. I try to build all of my products so that it doesn't matter where you are in the gender spectrum, because frankly, I feel like gender is such a fluid thing for a lot of us. For me, it is yeah. very, uh, very fluid for me. I, I'm a pansexual. I'm a sapiosexual. I don't look at your your XXXY chromosome penis vulva owning body as a thing that determines my desire. I look mm -hmm. at how do I feel when I'm with you? What kind of great conversation do we have? Do we have a values match? Like yeah. I'm much more interested in, are you as raving liberal progressive as I am? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know>? Right. <laughs> like, Perfect. I, I would never be able to date someone who didn't have my same values. That's I'm, I'm like yeah. a values driven, intellectual driven person. And so one of the things that I like to do is I like to think about sexuality in terms of, you know, what I really do is I teach people how to transform having sex into making love. I teach heart connected, passionate love making techniques. And it does not matter whether it's two penises, two vulvas, gender is just doesn't matter. Pleasure yeah. is pleasure. The parts love to get touched. They, we want all want connection. And so uh, some of the way, these are some of the ways I do things. And other things that I do are things like what images am I using in my email newsletter? Well, Susan, you've Fabulous. covered so much already and even more, but one of the things I want to just delve in just a little bit more, because we can certainly list all of the supplements that you recommend and we'll list those for people to go to, Anytime, sure. but I know that, you know, taking care of yourself and being a sexual being for yeah. so many of our listeners is very important. Yes. And a lot of us lose our libido as we age. Mm -hmm. What um, what else would you recommend yeah. in terms of, you know, taking care of yourself, nutrition that we can do just to, you know, in addition to the supplements? Yes. Right. Because supplements can't cover the effects of uh, not working out and, um, not getting good blood flow. You know, you've got to get moving. That's really what helps so much. You know, your libido is the other side of the same coin as your overall health. So if you have health issues, and those could be physical and mental or just mental health issues, and mm -hmm. so many of us are in stressful situations, we're living hand to mouth, you know, um, Mild depression. Depression, anxiety, um, social media, you know, craziness, yeah. um, our nutso politics system right now. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, you know, it's crazy making. And one of the things that I can tell you, this is a longevity show. And one of the things that I can tell you is that you must fight for your desire. When you have no libido, ask yourself, is it physical or is it emotional? 
Is it, is it that I don't have a partner who's pleasuring me or is it that I have other issues I need to attend to? I have a technique I call the magic pill method. And it basically, it's at magicpillmethod.com. And it basically is a downloadable PDF that helps walk you through. And if you have a partner, walk you and your partner through what it is that's holding you back from having the intimacy that you know is good for you, but you can't quite get to. Mm. It helps you have a conversation, a safe conversation in a safe way that gets things back on the table. And you can do this yourself or you can do this with a partner. So it's nice for kind of really coming up with like, what is it that's holding me back? And sometimes it's illness, physical and emotional. Sometimes it's low testosterone, which affects right. all bodies the same. It is the molecule oh, wow. of, of lust and desire. Um, that's very important. And then there's also, you know, desire is a combination of two things in equal measure. Safety and security and trust, being able to be yourself and to ask for what you want and feel comfortable that your partner is open to giving that to you and supporting you. That's that's one side of the equation. You know, it's a, it's a scale, like little Miss Liberty, right? Yeah. The mm-hmm. other side is variety, novelty, fun, adventure. And so you look at the left side, if you will, the trust and security, and you say, how do I, at my health, and how do I feel? And, and you know, do I feel comfortable? Do I feel good? And then the other side is, Is it going to be fun? Am I going to have a good time? Am I (laughs) bored? Um, What do I want to do next? And for that, I put together something else that I think is a really good resource. I make a lot of free resources because I feel like I just want to give and give and give. You never have to buy anything from me, but it's always there if you want it. You can have Mm -hmm. all my free shit forever. You know, I just, that's how I, that's how I do it. Just how I roll. And so the sex life bucket list is a really interesting thing because what it does is it essentially gives you 48 erotic play date ideas. And it's good across the gender spectrum of every, you know, sexual proclivity. It's it's really based, it's a humanity-based experience. Because when you peel out, peel off the surface, we're all the same underneath. Right. We're we're just humans wanting to be loved and played with. And so I like the sex life bucket list because you can do it solo. Because, you know, we started out this conversation talking about quantifying our health so mm-hmm. and our, you know, our, our aging so that we could keep bettering the numbers and watching the numbers and slowing right. down our aging. Well, your sex life is a, such a big part of anti-aging and longevity. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to that in just one second. But the sex life bucket list, what it essentially does is it gives you ideas of things that you'd like to do that would be fun for your sexuality because it's not going to get better if you don't have some goals. So these mm-hmm. are essentially, oh, these are the fun things I'd like to experience myself or experience with a partner. And if you're solo, it's very easy to create your bucket list for yourself. And if you're with a partner, it's quite easy for you to both go through, you, you get a download and then you get a, a 40 minute little video from me where I walk you through all 48 play dates and tell you what they are, including the 20 kinds of penis owner and vulva owner orgasms you could be having. Wow. So if you want to try to have more different kinds of orgasms, I tell you exactly what they are. So you'd be like, oh, okay, tell me about that one. What's that one? Tell me about that one. What's that one? Oh, those are the ones I want to try. So it gives you something to go for. So you've got, you know, your goals, if you will, and you can do it with a partner and you can make your A list. They can make their A list and you can make your B list, which is A's are, I want to totally do this. B's (laughs) are, I don't, it's not going to go on my A list, but if you want to do it, my lover, I'll do it. And then C's are, it's not for me right now. But never say never, because the thing you used to look at it and go, why do people even do that, are now the stuff of your fantasies. And you're like, oh, "Oh, yes. Okay. Because we mature. Taste change. Right. Yes. Taste change. You mature. Your sex life is part of your personal growth. And so the, the thing that I want to say about why it's so important to nurture your sexuality and to have things like a bucket list is that there was a study done in Europe where 2,500 people were shown images, pictures, photos of Mm -hmm. adults between the ages of 18 and 80, and they were asked to guess the age of all these people. And there was this group of people that everyone guessed to be 10 years younger than their actual age. And they're like, huh, these super young people, what's the correlation? 
And it turns out that these people, they finally figured it out. These were the people that were having intimate connections three times a week or more. I don't say sex because what is sex? What right. most people think sex is intercourse. Well, that yes. is just a religious patriarchal vestige of a former universe in which we are trying to not no long that we are trying to no longer live. Right? Like yeah. what some mm-hmm. white religious dude is telling me what sex is. Um, right. I'll pass on that. Thank you. Thank I'll be you. deciding what sex is for myself. And That's for right. me, it's like I like booby play and oral pleasure and intercourse and toys. And I like threesomes and I like my girlfriends and I like my boyfriends. And that's what sex is to me. Sex is a totally different thing for you guys. Right. Right. But that's what intimacy is. Intimacy is physical, sensual pleasure with yourself or another person or people. (laughs) I love that. When we do this, when we have these, orgasmic experiences that reboot our nervous system and create an endocrine cascade of feel-good hormones and, you know, help our heart and our brain. When you look in an MRI at what happens to your brain when you have an orgasm, woo, that thing lights up like a Christmas tree. Yes. So the more of those, the better. That's what keeps you young. If you want to be super young, have lots of great Sex your way. I'm reading nice. your book. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> we have you, a couple more minutes, but Cody, we we want to ask one more, a couple more questions. Yes, of course. So, as far as synergistic wellness is concerned, how does this affect your approach to longevity? Yeah. So the biohackers, we talk about things in the notion of a stack. So you're stacking all of these things and creating this entourage effect or this symphony where the great, the sum is greater than the parts. That's the synergistic Mm -hmm. construct of anti-aging and longevity. And so, for example, for me, what that looks like as, as an example is um, I work out at the gym six to seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Um, I do, three Vasper sessions a week, which is a, it's like this Nordic cross meets bicycle that uses cooling pads and blood flow restriction during high intensity interval training to massively improve your muscle, your muscle volume Mm -hmm. and your heart rate variability and the oxygenation of your blood of your body. Like I've got networks of veins running through my body. You could look on my side and you could just see it's all veiny. Like I'm veiny. Veiny is good, especially in the penis. You want a veiny, veiny penis. I love it when I work out and I see the veins because I feel healthy. Yeah. In in my penis, but also on my body too. So yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like the blood is moving. Yeah. That's what you need to get, the blood moving. And then I go, after I do the Vasper, I go into a cryo room and it's negative 124. And I stand in there for five minutes and I think about what I'm going to make for dinner. Or Mm -hmm. I think about my new social media ad campaign or whatever. I think about complex things and planning like future things so that I don't think about the cold. Then I get out and I lie on (laughs) what kind of looks like an old tanning bed, but it's red light, photo biomodulation. And I, I lay in that bed after I've like done the high intensity and I've done the cold. Now my body is like, oh, burr, it's winter. I need to get some sunlight. And it sucks in all that great photobiomodulation into my cells. It Mm -hmm. photobombs my skin and body with light energy that helps me lower inflammation, have better skin, it basically, it's anti-aging on mm-hmm. it, on many many measures. I do that. I've st- I have a protein smoothie with urolithin A from Timeline Nutrition, which I really like. It's a it does mitophagy. It helps build muscle by getting rid of the cells, the muscle cells that are um, broken, the zombie cells in your right. musculature, so you can build better muscle. 
So I have a good protein smoothie with a lot of collagen and vitamins and green powder and things that are good for me uh, with berries for the antioxidants, which are so important. Um, you know, I just hearing of all of this, facts. it sounds like all of this is really good for your brain, too, as you were s suggesting all these things and keeping your brain active as we age, yeah. too. Yeah. Would, would you not agree with that? A hundred percent. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm going in in about 10 days for something called a brain map. And um, we're going to look at because I had a traumatic brain injury and then I got really bad long haul COVID. And it oh my gosh. because of that, it really messed up my brain. For about four months, I never got out of bed. Mm -hmm. I lost my ability to speak. I couldn't read. I, could, I was so exhausted, I couldn't even watch TV. It took me oh, about no. 18 months to start to come back from that. And I'm still mopping cleanup on both of those things. So now that I've got my strength back and some energy back and I'm sleeping really well, that's another key component is yes. a dark, cool room. Got to get your sleep. I recently had to ask Sir Tim, my husband of 30 years on Monday. Congratulations. Um, thank you. He is, he is my, my prince. Um, I had to ask him to move to our guest room temporarily until he solves his snoring problem because <laughs> we were apart. I love that. I was sleeping so well and I was <laughs> having such better days. And I thought, darling, I love you, but I, ca I don't love you enough to ruin my life over your snoring. And I need to incentivize you to fix this problem. So out you go, daddy. -o. Out you go. Give me you Park Avenue, darling. And you know, you somehow when you ask it, I feel like he probably did not take offense because of yeah. the way you worded it. It was for so his own health. <laughs> and to incentivize your partner. Yes. I'm going to use yeah. that in my relationship when, when I get one. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe you don't have a relationship. Working on it. Working on it. Yes. Oh, my God. We'll talk You're later. Such, <laughs> you are such a hunky, hottie, sweetheart, smarty, love, oh love, love angel. Oh what? God. Everybody in the universe, please date Steve. He's amazing. And Cody, of course, <laughs> is super cute, but I don't In a relationship, relationship yeah. yeah. Okay, so, uh, not, so yes. go, yeah, we got to go with So Steve. don't date me. <laughs> Darn it. Sorry, Cody. Not this time. <laughs> next time <laughs> next go around definitely um you know before we let you go you yeah. are the spokesperson for the anti-aging group what an amazing thing to be what can you tell us about that yeah it was so funny so the anti-aging group has treatments for the reversal of atrophy of the genital system. Basically, Gaines Wave, which almost everybody's hearing about now, which is awesome, and another product for the vulva called Femi Wave. And it's not a product, it's a treatment. You go to a place and they put this acoustic wave, rub it on your genitals, and it stimulates new tissue growth. It knocks the plaque off the blood supply. It regenerates tissue, more blood supply, which helps the nerves regenerate. You get sensation back. Because what happens as you age is you get vascular retraction. And so you're not getting the blood into your genitals and you get athlo atherosclerosis, which is blood plaque, which calcifies and stiffens the blood vessels. So that makes the penis not be able to hold the blood in and it makes the vulva not be able to get filled up with blood to feel the pleasure. Because you have to remember our brain processes sensation and pleasure. Not mm -hmm. It's not happening actually in your genitals. It's actually happening in your brain. There's the mechanical oh. piece, which is the blood goes in and it locks off and you sure. maintain an erection. Same with women. The blood goes in, it, it gets full and lush and big and plump and juicy. That makes bigger surface area that sends more signals to the pleasure centers of your brain. And Dr. Nan... Nan Rice, is that her name? I'm reading her book right now. Um, she put a bunch of people in an MRI and had stimulated different parts of their vulva as an example and said, oh yeah, if you touch the, the lips, the breasts, the nipples, the clitoris, the entrance to the vagina and inside the vagina, the cervical area, it lights up all different parts of her pleasure signals. So wow. the same for men, the difference, you know, you can touch the penis on the outside, but you can also touch the prostate, the nipples, the kissing, the full body touch, 
all those things light up your brain. They haven't done the MRIs for men. Interesting. That's one place where women are a little bit ahead, but it goes without saying we're the same parts arranged in different order. So yeah. stimulating multiple locations is really important, but you've got to get the blood in there and get it plumped up. And what Gaines wave and Femi wave do is they help reverse that vascular retraction. They regrow the new blood supply back in so everything can get plumped up and be nice and firm and have lots of surface area. So it reverses like, oh, I can't quite get to orgasm or, you know, uh, it doesn't feel as good as it used to. Or uh, for women, I've lost lubrication or Mm -hmm. um, I'm peeing my pants. This is women have a horrible female bodied people, let's just say, have a horrible time peeing our pants. Um, So Femi Wave does that and Gaines Wave does deep into the tissue, not just so it gets up in the perineum, it gets the prostate area, it gets the buried shaft, as well as what sticks out and reconstitutes all that tissue. So it's like reversing, it's like a facelift for your dick. It reverses the aging that happens, especially when we haven't been moving around a lot and getting a lot of, you know, um, blood flow. Nice. That sounds wonderful. Great. I yes. think we, you have been so enlightening. I can't wait to re-listen to this episode. There's so yes. much there. I People have my can... notes here. So I, yes. I love it. This is so amazing. Um Okay, where can people follow you? Because we we want people to get your newsletter. I know this is an episode to re-listen to, to get uh, the blood test that you talked about. But if people were to follow you, where should we be directed? Yeah, I think just go to betterlover.com. That's the easiest place to sign up for my newsletter. And if you're on my newsletter and you have any questions, just hit reply to any email you get from me and ask me any question you want, and I will reply. Um, I reply to everybody's questions. I spend a few hours a week just, you know, just replying to people's questions. I'm also on Instagram at Susan Bratton. Um, You can follow me there. And I also have my OnlyFans. It's my name as well, Susan Bratton, OnlyFans.com slash Susan Bratton. And um, I think those are probably the best places to start. And then, of course, you can get the Sex Life Bucket List, the Magic Pill Method. Um, Those are free downloads as well. Um, The supplements are at the20store.com. And um, what else? Gains Wave. If you want the Gains Wave or Femi Wave, you can just go to their websites. But um, if you me- if you decide to get that treatment, or you can ha- if you have any questions, just email me. But if you decide to get that treatment, use promo code Better B E T T E R, mm. and you get a seventh treatment free. And that, that is a fantastic bonus. You want a seventh treatment free. That's a good (laughs) deal. So um, anytime you have any questions, feel free to just you know ping me, and I'll do what I can do to help you out. Oh, I Susan, love it. that's so lovely and giving. You're so wonderful. Thank you. Wow, Steve, what a great conversation with Susan. I just totally adore her. Her energy, her life story, her insights. They were all so amazing. What did you think? She vibrated through the airwaves when we were talking to her. And I know you got that because you were just feeling her. I was as well. Uh, she's been on our other podcast once before, and I just knew she would be great for of a certain age. She's got that energy and that life and the tools. And, you know, maybe you're not going to do everything that she's suggesting, but you're definitely going to want to research and try some of these things and incorporate them into your life because it's not worth it living to a certain age, if you're not feeling good, if you're not having sexual intimacy, if you're not having that energy to wake up every day. So I'm just excited about this. This is really great. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's everything this show is about. She's the reason I feel like we making this show for her specifically because (laughs) it's, she's just that good. So I really appreciate her message and everything that she taught us in this episode. I love it. And, yes. you know, next week, if we could preview of a certain age, we're just moving through these weeks here. Next week, we have my former trainer, Alejandro Terrazas, who's going to be talking about being fit for life. And I rem- such great information on that. You don't want to miss it. We really encourage you, wherever you get your podcast, to rate and review us. Give us five stars. It will only help spread the word of a certain age and get us 
more listeners into our arsenal. So follow us. How can people also follow us? That's right. They can follow us on Instagram at of a certain age pod. DM us with any topics, suggestions, or if you just want to chat with us. And what? Do, and why don't you do that? Oh, outro perfect. Thing? Sorry. No, that's um, okay. I can edit all this. Cool. And what are we doing, Steve? We are living, living out, out loud. loud.